Hey son, how are you? Did you have a really good day at school today? Tell me what you got up to. Put a smile on your old man's face. Hey dad, yeah, school was okay. It was a little bit hard. I felt really tired throughout the whole day, but at least I managed to get through. Hanging out with my friends was really fun. That was probably the highlight of my day. Okay, well that's good to hear. It's a privilege to be able to get an education. I want you to make the most of it. How was the school lunch? Did it give you enough energy? Uh, it was okay. I wish I had a little bit more though. It gets a little bit frustrating looking at the other kids and their lunch boxes. All of them have really cool stuff to eat. They've got a really big sandwich that their mom made them. They've got an apple. They've got something to drink. They even have some little snacks. Sometimes I get a taste of those snacks if they're nice to me. I kind of wish that I could eat that type of stuff. I know, son, I know. I know it must be really tough being in your position right now. I can't even imagine how you feel. I know you want to eat what the other kids are eating. I just want you to bear with it just this once. I'm gonna find a way for us to get through this tough situation. I just need you to hold out for me. Okay, Dad, I understand. But can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. What's going on, son? Well, I'm not really sure why we're in this situation to begin with. Like, do we deserve this? Did we do something wrong? Are we bad people or something? How come I'm the only person with a really bad lunch? All I get is a couple of rice crackers. I am starving, Dad. I don't even feel like playing with the kids sometimes. I just want to sit down and have a sleep or something. Can I do anything to help you? I just want to eat good food for once. Ben, I don't know what to say. I'm trying to put on a brave face for you right now, but it's actually really hurting me on the inside to know that my son is feeling this way. Look, Dad, I get it. We're in this situation and we can't do anything about it. I just want to know why. I want to know why I'm in this situation and none of the other kids are. I guess you deserve an explanation. You're not a stupid boy anymore. You can understand these types of things. Exactly, Dad. So just tell me. Okay, well, basically, your father has made a lot of mistakes. He screwed up. He screwed up big time. What do you mean, Dad? What are you talking about? I'm talking about me trying to rise too high, and I ended up crashing down hard because of it. What do you mean? Well, look, son. Our family has always had a really decent upbringing. I mean, it's nothing special, but it's quite normal. You wouldn't say that it was completely impoverished, but you wouldn't say that we were particularly wealthy either. I kind of wanted to do something more for our family. I wanted to do something more for us. You wanted to do more? In what way did you want to do more? Well, look, uh, what's the best way I can put this? I made a couple of decisions that seemed like they were going to work out. I mean, at first they definitely did. I was getting us very financially wealthy. I mean, looking at the numbers on paper, it just seemed like they were going to go up, up, up. I got a little bit addicted to that feeling. I was dreaming about things for our family, dreaming about the life that we could have. I was finally going to break a cycle. I was going to break a cycle of just mediocrity, of just being normal people. I wanted to raise us higher. I wanted a better future for you. I'm still not understanding. In what way were you earning this money? Were you that hopeful that we were going to be really successful or something? You said that we were going to be rich, but look at us now. I can barely get a decent lunchbox for myself. I have to walk to school instead of catching the bus there. Mom is working a job, and I can see her losing her hair when she brushes it. It seems like we're in a really crap situation, so I don't understand how you could be so hopeful. I know, I know. This is why I feel so bad. You see, the thing that I was dabbling around with was stocks. What is that, Dad? Okay, well, do you remember those old football cards that I gave you a long time ago? Yeah, I know those ones. They're like really old ones, aren't they? Yeah, exactly, those ones. 
I told you that one day, they could be worth a lot of money, right? You could probably sell one card for $10,000. Think about it. Think about how many rice crackers you could buy with that much money. If I had that much money, I think rice crackers are the last thing that I would be buying. I was thinking you would say something like that. Well, basically, stocks are kind of the same thing. It doesn't have much worth now, it's only a couple of dollars. But think about how much it'll be someday. It'll be worth a lot more than that. Just like those cards of yours. Except sometimes, these things don't happen. Sometimes these stocks end up going down in value instead of going up. It's a really risky business. Are you kidding me, Dad? Are you trying to say that my cards are going to be the same thing? If I keep these cards, am I going to be poor or something one day? No, no. Obviously not. I'm saying that your dad used his income to buy stocks, and then when they went down in value, he only got a little bit of money back for it. So, I lost money with those stocks. You haven't even paid money to begin with. I gave you those cards for free. You're not going to be poor someday, so don't worry about it. Okay, Dad, I hope I can trust you. I hope you can too. I know with how the situation is right now, I can understand if you really hate me and don't trust me at all. This is all happening because you got a little bit greedy, isn't it? It is, and you don't know how sorry I am for that. Even if I had everyone's best interest at heart, it's my fault that we're in the position we're in. I take full responsibility for it. The game that I was playing was way too risky. I had an option of what I could have done with the money. I could have played it safe. I could have just kept it safe in the bank account, gaining a little bit of interest. I mean, sure, it's not a whole lot of money, but at least that money is there, you know? We can use it any time. It wouldn't have got you into a really fantastic school, but it would have got you into school all the same. At the end of the day, that's the main thing. I see, Dad. So, you were just being too risky. Your riskiness means that I only eat rice crackers for lunch every day. That's right, son. You put it in a really harsh way, uh, but that's exactly how it is. But look, here's the thing in life. You're gonna make a lot of mistakes. You're gonna wish that you didn't do certain things. You're gonna do things you really regret it, and sometimes you're even gonna suffer, just like we're suffering right now. But I want you to look at this as a little bit of a gift to you. What do you mean by that? How is this a gift? This is a gift. I just want you to change the way you think about it. Because I made this mistake, that means that you have the opportunity to learn from it. You have the opportunity to learn that you need to be careful with what you do with your money. You need to prioritize your family's safety over your own personal greed. You need to do whatever you can to be a good father. Take a look at our situation now. I have a full-time job and I'm also working one afterward. Your mother is doing the exact same thing. Neither of us is emotionally there for you. I know you're feeling quite upset and alone sitting in our household by yourself. Having to cook the meals by yourself, having to clean up by yourself. You even have to entertain yourself. You don't know how much this breaks my heart to know that this is happening. I think about you all the time when I'm at work. It's because of this that I know that I'm not a good father. I know I'm not doing the right thing for you. So you have my apologies for both my absence and the fact that we don't have any money at the moment. Come on, Dad. I don't want you to talk like that. You're still the best dad in the whole world to me. Oh, don't lie, son. It's okay. I understand. No, Dad, I mean it. Think about it. Everything you've done so far has been for the family, right? Regardless of whether or not it went well. It's clear that you're thinking about me and mom. I know you didn't want to make mom work, and I know you're probably hurting on the inside because of it. This is a really tough situation, but I don't blame you for it. I don't hate you for it. At least I know at the end of the day that you love me. Do you mean that, Ben? Do you really mean it? Of course I do. You're the best dad in the whole world. Oh, Ben. And you know what? It's fine. I know things are tough at the moment, but I am not weak. I'm not going to sit here and cry. I am going to do my best. 
I want to help you and mom too. I don't know how to cook that well yet, but I'm going to read some recipes. I'm going to get better at it, and I'm going to make sure that you guys don't have to do anything when you get home. Oh, come on. Don't do that. Ben, you're just a little boy. I want you to be focusing on your school. That is the most important thing. Don't worry about how things are at home. Don't worry about school, Dad. I wasn't really a stupid student in the first place. Everything is going fine in that area. I can finish the homework and whatnot within seconds. It is just way too easy. I can help you guys enough so that we can get out of this situation. I just don't want you to come home stressed. I don't want you to sit there thinking you're such a bad dad all the time. You really are a good son, aren't you? I am so proud of you, Ben. I know one day you're going to be a really good man. You keep up that attitude and you're going to make a woman very happy. She's going to have no complaints about staying with you. Hey, come on! Are you serious right now? Are you seriously going to do me like that? I go out of my way to talk to you and you do this? Hey, uh, you're Holly, right? The girl that talked to me today, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. That's who I am. I'm Holly. What's the matter? You have too many girls coming out to talk to you that you just forgot who I was? Damn, you really aren't a gentleman, are you? Maybe I'm having second thoughts about talking with you. Well, I wasn't expecting this, to be honest. It seems like you're really angry at me for something. What do you mean, I'm angry? It's totally obvious why I'm angry at you. Are you trying to act like you don't know or something? Don't play stupid with me. I see through your little games. Holly, I'm really confused right now. I thought you and I had a pretty good conversation today. I'm not really sure why you would be angry now. Did I say something today to annoy you or something? Come on. How long are you going to keep this act up for? It's starting to really get on my nerves. Or are you actually that clueless that you don't know why I'm angry? Yes, that's exactly the case. I have no idea what is going on right now. Wow. Okay. Well, looks like you really don't know how a girl feels after all, do you? Looks like I actually have to explain this to you. What a pain. So here I am going to McDonald's for the first time in a long time. I'm just not feeling myself. I'm not really in a good mood today. I wanted to do a little bit of a cheat. I felt like getting something fatty to eat. Something that probably can't even be classed as food. Okay, I know this, Holly. You were telling me about it today, right? It's not like you to do this type of thing. You like to eat food that's actually healthy. When you sat down with your burger, you saw me across the room, right? That's right. I was staring at you for a while. I was trying to give you some signals. I was trying to make eye contact with you. I even tried to wave in your direction and you still didn't look at me. Nothing would work. You were just way too focused on that crappy, greasy meal of yours. Yeah, well, I'm the type of guy that likes to be attentive to the things he's doing. I know you spoke about the things that you hate about McDonald's, but I actually happen to quite like coming here. It's a really good place to go when I'm on my break. Yeah, yeah, I heard it already. It's probably the best meal that you eat in the whole week, right? I can tell as much already. So anyway, here I am trying to get your attention and I'm forced to just come up and talk to you. I've never done that thing in my whole life, you know. I was so afraid that you were going to reject me. Well, I'm not that type of guy. I'm quite nice, actually. I appreciate someone who has the courage to come up to me. So I was very happy to give you my number when you asked for it. Oh, really now? Is that the type of guy you are? So there's nothing really special about me at all, is there? I'm just another girl that comes up to talk to you. Wow. Way to make me feel like you're interested in me. Well, hey, Holly, I just met you. Do you expect me to be interested in you straight away? And not only that, but I don't have girls talk to me all the time. It's not exactly a common thing, you know? I know. But even still, you could have been a bit nicer to me, don't you think? Okay, maybe you're right about that, sure. 
Anyway, I'm still really confused as to why you're getting really angry right now. I mean, when we had that conversation today, you seemed like a really happy girl. I thought you were really nice. I am really nice. Just because I'm angry right now doesn't mean I'm not nice. I'm only angry because of your behavior. What are you talking about? I only spoke with you for a brief couple of seconds, and then we exchanged numbers. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what happened after we exchanged numbers. I am really confused right now. Nothing happened after we exchanged numbers. I went back to my meal. I didn't even text you or anything. What are you getting angry about? Well, that's it right there, isn't it? You just said the exact reason for why I'm angry. What are you talking about? Me getting back to my meal? No, of course not. I'm talking about the fact that you haven't texted me. I mean, we met like, what, about seven hours ago or something? I thought for sure you would actually text me and say thank you. That's what all the other guys do. Oh, okay, so that's what this is about, is it? You're angry because I haven't texted you. Exactly. I mean, think about it. Think about someone in my position. I just told you how hard it was for me to come up and talk to you. It took a lot of bravery on my part. The way I see it, you and I are playing tennis, and I just passed the ball onto your court. Despite that, you haven't even hit it back to me. It's not fun if I just keep hitting balls over there. I need you to return some to me every now and then. Okay, well, I'm really sorry. You caught me at a bad time, though. I mean, I had work today. The only reason I was in the McDonald's was because I was on my break. It's the best place for me to go and eat and quickly get out of there so I can get back to work. Not only that, but I only just got home and I'm trying to wind down right now. It's not because I wasn't interested in you or anything. Are you sure about that? You're not giving me excuses, are you? Of course not. I've got no reason to lie about it. I'm really sorry if you were hurt by this or anything. I mean, I'm not overly invested in you, but I do think you're very interesting. I want to take the time to get to know you. Are you serious right now? It just sounds like you're trying to sweet talk me. Sounds like the exact same thing you probably tell all the other girls. Hey, well, I'm not the type of guy that has a lot of other girls in his life. So you have got nothing to worry about there. But you know you're getting angry about me not messaging you. I was actually thinking that after I take my bath, I was going to message you. What do you mean after you take your bath? Are you in the bath right now? Yeah, I am actually. That is so creepy. What the hell? Don't talk to me while you're in the bath. Well, look, you're the one that messaged me while I'm soaking in the bath. I can't exactly help that. Yeah, well, it's starting to creep me out. So could you just get out already? What? Are you joking? You want me to get out of the bath? No way. Just message me later or something. This is my special time to relax. Yeah, well, I want you to use your special time towards talking to me. Not sitting naked there in the bath. I mean, just thinking about it is starting to creep me the hell out. Well, if it's starting to creep you out that much, you don't really need to talk to me. I mean, it's not like I'm trying to send you brain signals to think about me in the bath or anything. Honestly, I can't believe it. You must be the first guy that I've ever talked to that thinks it's okay to talk to me while you're sitting there in the bath. Well, look, I don't think it's that weird, if I'm being honest. I mean, it's not like we're doing a video call or anything. Don't you start on that. I don't want you getting any weird, creepy ideas. There's no way you and I can have a phone call like this. Hey, I wasn't suggesting that at all. Jeez, Holly, you're making a really big deal about this, aren't you? Just what type of girl are you anyway? What's that supposed to mean? Well, I mean, I'm really confused. Actually, no, I'm a little bit more than confused. I'm actually really surprised. Okay, what are you so surprised about? Well, I mean, let's face it. Do I really need to say what the stark difference between you and me is? Yeah, maybe. I guess I'm a girl and you're a boy. Is that what you're trying to get at? No, not that, of course. I mean, that's just stating the obvious. Actually, what I'm getting at is also pretty obvious as well. Okay, well, hurry up and just get out with it already. 
What is it you want to say? Well, look, take a look at you and then take a look at me. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. When you walked into McDonald's, I did notice you. I thought it was kind of weird seeing a girl of your beauty coming into the store. I mean, that's not to say that a beautiful woman doesn't eat at McDonald's or anything, but it was a little bit of a shock to me. That was surprise number one. The next surprise was you actually coming up to talk to me. You were actually surprised about that? Well, yeah. I mean, how often is it that a beautiful woman comes up to talk to a man, especially a man like me? There's nothing that sticks out about me at all. I'm really curious as to why you were interested in me in the first place. Oh, come on. Is it that much of a mystery to you? Well, yeah, pretty much. I mean, you're still very young, right? You must have a thousand guys after you at the moment. Thousands of really cool guys, too. They could be handsome. They could be tall. They could be charming. They could have a lot of money. I mean, there are so many different types of guys that are just spamming your Instagram right now. Why is it that you would go for some weird 9 to 5 guy that doesn't really stick out and spends his time every day eating at McDonald's? It's a little bit strange, don't you think? Think about things from my perspective. Okay, well maybe you're just overgeneralizing right now. Maybe you're just trying to categorize me and you're not actually getting to know me at all. Well, actually, just by me asking this question shows that I'm trying to get to know you, right? I mean, I'm just really curious about what is going on here. Yeah, well, you're not wrong about that. Maybe you're smarter than you look. What is that supposed to mean? Do I look like I'm dumb or something? Here's the thing, Ben. I'm a different type of girl. I have a very interesting upbringing and I have an interesting way of thinking about things. I mean, sure, I recognize the type of girl I am. I mean, I'm not going to try and downplay it. I am beautiful. I'm very attractive and I have a lot of people that are after me. But I don't have a lot of people after me that I'm actually interested in. In fact, I'm really turned off by them. Or if I'm not turned off by them, I'm bored. And if I'm not bored, I'm actually really irritated whenever I have to interact with them. Okay, this is really interesting. I never heard a girl talk about the opposite sex like this. I wonder what type of experience you've had. Oh, really now? So now you're trying to show interest in me, are you? And here I was thinking that you were just some cold guy that wasn't going to message me back. Look, like I told you, I had every intention of messaging you, but just when the time is right. I mean, I need to sort myself out in my own inner world, right? Not that I know your situation, but I can take a pretty good guess that I'm not like you. Having a 9 to 5 doesn't make you a very emotionally available person. I've got a lot of things to do. It's hard to slot people in. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like you're just trying to make excuses just for the fact that I called you out. No, honestly, I'm being serious. But anyway, we're getting off track here. I want to hear about these experiences that you've had with other guys. I mean, someone as beautiful as you, you're bound to have found someone that likes you so far, right? All you had to do was choose the right one. Yeah, well, it seems that way, doesn't it? It seems very simple to you, but you don't actually know what it's like. You don't know how hard it is. Maybe you're right about that. Maybe I don't know how hard it is, but I'm very curious to know. Right now, I'm looking at a puzzle. I'm looking at something I don't understand, and I'm very intrigued by it. Oh, really? Is this your way of flirting, then? It's kind of cute of you, I guess. Well, look, I've met every type of guy out there, including all of those guys you were mentioning before. I met the handsome ones, I met the tall ones, I met the wealthy ones with the gift of the gab. I know exactly what every single one of them is like, and I know that if I ever spent another date with them, that I wouldn't feel satisfied. I wouldn't enjoy myself. Are you serious right now? If I was a girl, that's definitely what I would do. How come you didn't find it any fun? It's their personality. I mean, you don't become a rich and wealthy person and not develop some weird, unattractive personality. I mean, a lot of the people that I meet are really arrogant and up themselves. They constantly think they're better than me. They look down on me. They treat me like I'm some object, not as a person or anything like that. In all honesty, I find it super hard to talk to them. Wow, I wasn't expecting an answer like that. 
I guess there really are people out there that deviate from the norm. So you're trying to tell me that the type of guy that you want to go after is like some poor guy? Someone that doesn't have any confidence in himself? Someone that doesn't really work on their appearance? Seeing as you hate the rich and handsome people, I'm assuming that you want to go for the opposite? Of course not. Oh my god, I'm not into that type of person at all. They tend to come up and hit on me all the time, and I just can't do it. I can't see myself being around them for any more than two minutes. There's no way I can date someone like that. I see, I see. It seems that you're very picky. What type of guy are you after then? Are you actually going to sit there and tell me that it's me? Well, if I'm being honest, Ben, yes. That's exactly the type of person I'm after. What are you talking about, though? I mean, there is nothing special about me. There are no quirks. There's nothing that really sticks out. I'm just your average guy. I'm the same dude that you walk past every day. The guy that does his 9 to 5, the guy that has a set routine every week, the guy that doesn't have any spontaneity in his life. That's who I am. I mean, come on, surely you got that impression before you came up and talked to me. You already knew that I wasn't anything special. Oh my god, Ben, you just don't get it, do you? It's not getting through your head. You aren't anything special. You aren't fun. You aren't exciting. You have every routine that bores me. I could tell by the clothes you were wearing that you weren't particularly wealthy. And I could also tell that you had a 9 to 5 just from your personality as well. I knew that you were quite low on the rankings for your company, too. I could read you like a book. It was that easy. Okay, well, this is just further proving my point. You've already hit the nail on the type of guy that I am. So why would you be interested in me? Why would you still chase after me? Because that's what I like. That's what I want. That's the type of person I want to be with. Are you serious right now? Why? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. You don't want to be with someone that brings a little bit of value into your life? Someone that's a lot more fun? Listen to you speak right now. You're sounding exactly like my dad. Your dad? Yeah, my dad would always talk about that type of thing. He kept telling me that I was an amazing girl and that I needed to be really picky about the guy I was with. I needed to have strong criteria. I needed to make sure that he was the perfect man. He was going to do exactly what it was necessary to take care of me. He kept telling me what I should want instead of actually respecting what I did want. And you're kind of sounding exactly like him now. Okay, well, sorry. I, I mean, I'm not trying to tell you what you should want and what you shouldn't want, but it's just really bizarre as to why you would like me in the first place. I mean, you like mediocrity? Is that what you like? Yeah, that's what it is. Is that such a big issue for you? Is it wrong for me to look the way I do and like a guy like you? Of course not. There's nothing wrong with it at all. But don't blame me for being skeptical here. It's just too good to be true, you know? I mean, Holly, you really are a beautiful woman. It just doesn't feel right for you to be with a guy like me. Yeah, well, what am I meant to do about it? It's not like I could have changed my looks or anything. I was born this way. I saw someone that I like and I went up to talk to him. Is that such a big issue? No, no, it's not. I'm really glad you did. I'm really interested in getting to know you, Holly. You seem like you come from a very unique background. Are you really? So can I take that in the way that you like me too? You must like me as well, right? Well, I'm not sure yet. I still want to get to know you. Okay, well, if that's the case, how about you just hurry up? Invite me on a date already! Or is that not the type of guy you are? I guess you want me to do all the chasing, don't you? You want me to be the one that invites you out? Well, I mean, I'm fine with either way, to be honest, but it seems like you're more keen on seeing me. So I'll let you decide on how things go from this point on. And you know what? If you don't like me, that is totally fine. I mean, it is me, after all. I'm pretty sure you're going to get bored of me before you know it. Yeah, right. You just don't know me at all, Ben. You don't know how I operate. I've already decided in my mind that you're the type of guy that I want to be with. Oh, really? Well, just so you know, that guy is still sitting in the bathtub talking to you right now. Hey, I told you to cut that out already. 
Don't creep me out. Just get out of the bath. Who am I kidding? You're not going to listen to me, are you? Anyway, look, I'm really keen on going on a date with you somewhere that isn't McDonald's. Somewhere that actually has a little bit of class to it. Who knows? Give me a little bit of time to work my charm and you might even feel driven to marry me. Hey, you pencil pusher. You really gonna go all this time without talking to me? You really think that you can just go ahead and marry my daughter without even messaging me every now and then? It's been a couple of weeks since you and I last met. I think you should keep in contact with your father-in-law. Oh, hey Greg. Thanks for the message. You're kinda right about that. You have my apologies. I should be keeping more frequent communication with you. We're gonna be family soon, right? It's important for us to get along. Exactly. It seems like you already know how important it is to talk to me. So the question is, why? Why haven't you been messaging me so far? Well, uh, look, I don't want to downplay the importance of having a relationship with my father-in-law. But in all honesty, I've been up to my neck in things that I have to do. I mean, preparing for this wedding and everything is not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of money and I'm actually working overtime to make sure that I'm on top of everything. It hasn't been easy to squeeze in time for myself. So I'm sorry if I haven't gone out of my way to message you, but just know this, I have every intention of getting along with my father-in-law. I am very interested in this girl. Oh really now? That doesn't surprise me. You don't need to tell me that you're interested in my daughter. I mean, take a look at her. She's an absolute stunner. You have me to thank for that. I really know how to choose them, don't I? I always wanted to have beautiful children. I mean, my genes alone would have been able to do that. But being married to a pretty lady would have increased their chances of that happening, right? Now take a look at Holly. She's an absolute beauty. With looks like that, she could get any guy she wants. I know, I've been telling her that type of thing every day. She definitely is beautiful. Exactly. So it makes sense why you're interested in her. Well, actually, no. I, I mean, yes, obviously her beauty comes into account, but I'm interested in more than her beauty, and I'm not just trying to say that to appease you. Oh, really now? Well, let's hear it then. What is it exactly about my daughter that you lack? Well, look, uh, I'll be honest with you, Greg. I don't have a lot of experience with women. I'm not really sure what really makes a good wife or a good girlfriend. But what I do know is that your daughter and I get along very well. It's almost like we're two puzzle pieces that are meant to match together. I didn't really get that impression when I saw you two, to be honest. Really? I thought being her father and everything, you would notice it straight away. Well, let me elaborate on the relationship your daughter and I have. Basically, her and I are kind of like soulmates. We really get along. We can joke about everything. I mean, sure, there are times that she gets angry at me. I mean, there was this time when we first met each other that I was texting her when I was in the bath. It really ticked her off. But even though all of this stuff happens constantly, I still find a way to make a joke about it and we really enjoy each other's company at the end of the day. Not only that, but the romance is there when it needs to be. We have the perfect balance of emotions, and I think we're going to be a really good couple from this point on. Getting married to her is one of the better decisions in my life. Yeah, I can imagine it would be. I mean, this must be the climax of your life, right? What else is going to be there from this point on? You aren't doing anything special. You're not trying to create some big multinational business or anything. You don't have any type of dream you're chasing after. You're just a regular old dude, aren't you? Yeah, well, you hit the nail on the head with that one, Greg. That's exactly what I am. There is nothing special about me. I mean, it's like you said, I'm a pencil pusher. My job doesn't offer much excitement. I have the same routine every day. How do you feel about your life when you put into those terms, Ben? I mean, I know that you've been thinking about it up until now, but now that you put it into words, don't you see how pathetic that is? Don't you think you should aim for something higher? Don't you think you should at least try for a promotion? 
I mean, sure, I agree with you. If I could get a promotion, that would be great. I certainly wouldn't turn the offer down. But at the same time, I don't want to live my life on the edge. I don't want to take too many risks. You mentioned opening up my own business or something. But that comes with a lot of risks and my plan is to actually have a family with Holly. That's my number one priority. If you said I had a dream, that would be it. Oh, really? So you want to have a family? But do you realize that being financially secure is key to having a decent family? I mean, what do you expect your children to do? Do you really want to give birth and have them go to school with your meager lunches? Do you really want them to suffer like that? No, that's exactly the opposite of what I want, Greg. I don't want that at all. That's the type of future that I'm trying to avoid at all costs. Well, there you go. That's your motivation. There's your motivation to actually go out there and do something. To actually use your money towards something. You can't just sit there doing your normal 9 to 5 all the time, earning a really basic minimum wage. If you really care about your family, you'll do more than that. I know, I know. I hear where you're coming from. I totally agree. At the same time, you're mentioning opening up my own business and stuff. In my opinion, that's going to be even more detrimental to the financial security of my family than me just keeping my job right now. Are you serious? Why would you say something like that? Well, think about it. Who knows when things are going to go south? Who knows what could happen? I mean, we had corona recently, right? Think about all the businesses that shut down because of that. So many people lost their money. Well, fine. It doesn't have to be about business. Why don't you make it about stocks? You know, people earn a lot of money through stocks, don't you? Some people don't even need to have that much experience in them. They don't even need to have a knowledge of what the stocks are going to do. They just put their money into a really decent company that is guaranteed to do well, and then from that point on, it just skyrockets. If you care about your family, you'd put some money in there, wouldn't you? No, there is no way that I'm doing that. I am not touching stocks. Never. I'm never putting my money into that thing. What is going on right now? Sounds like you have a lot of antagonism towards investing your money. I'm sorry, I just have some personal reasons why I don't want to do the things you're suggesting right now. Look, Greg, I'm listening to you. I hear where you're coming from. I know you're only saying these things because you care about me, you care about your daughter, and you care about the family that we're going to have from this point on. I understand that. But all I can ask is that you trust me. There's a reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. I have a plan. If everything goes according to my plan, things should work out for my family. Yeah, right. From the sounds of it, your plan is to do nothing, isn't it? Doesn't sound like you or your family are going anywhere. I'm not really sure if I can trust my daughter being in your hands. Tell me a little bit more about yourself, Ben. I mean, I didn't get much from you the other day. You told me that you have a 9 to 5 job. You go home, you have a bath, you eat dinner, go to sleep, and then you do the same thing the next day. Even on weekends, you don't do much. You said that you just meditate and think about things. Isn't there anything else to your life? Don't you have any hobbies? Uh, don't you have anything that excites you? Well, actually, there's not a lot more that I can tell you about myself, Greg. That's exactly who I am. I know a lot of people invest their time into different things that they do on the weekends and whatnot. But for me, just sitting back and being in the moment pondering my mind, seeing the things that it can come up with, that's what I enjoy the most. Really? So you're trying to tell me that the most enjoyable part of your life is just sitting there doing nothing? As crazy as that sounds, yes, that's actually what I enjoy. What was my daughter thinking about when she married you? What is going through that girl's head? Honestly, this is the biggest enigma I've ever faced. I thought I raised her differently. I thought I raised her to actually respect her own value. I'm sorry, Greg. What do you mean by that? What does her value have to do with anything? You really want me to explain it to you, do you? Ben, it seems like you're not getting the picture. 
Well, let me tell you something about my family. I didn't raise my children to be an average citizen. I didn't raise them to just do a 9 to 5 job or to be married to some guy that doesn't do anything with his life. No, I wanted both of them to do something that made them successful. I wanted both of them to be in a high place in life. Now look, I'm not going to lie about my own life. It's been quite mediocre. Very similar to what you're doing. But it got to the point when I was my old age where I thought that I don't want this for my children. I wanted them to actually do something, to achieve something better. I had a plan that my daughter would marry someone rich, successful, and famous. That's the type of person that she deserves to be with. Her value even offers her that opportunity. As for my son, I wanted him to create something of himself. I wanted him to be earning his own money. I wanted him to be his own boss. There's no way that I wanted him to turn out to be a guy like you. I see what you're saying. I could tell you that your son David was really turned on. He is very passionate about opening up his businesses. Even after he has had so many failed ones so far, he's still trying to go at it. I really respect that tenacity. Yeah, right. You got a really good way with words, don't you, Ben? You act like you're trying to flatter me and compliment my children. But I know that you're just putting them down. You don't look at my son David as anything at all. Actually, no, that's not the case at all. I'm a little bit offended that you would think that way, to be honest. It is awesome what he's doing. Not many people have the drive to do that. That's worthy of my respect. Yeah, well, you get a pass this time. I don't want to hear you putting my children down again. I'm sorry, I am really confused. I wasn't putting him down at all, but I guess I'll take your warning to heart. But anyway, you said you don't like me and I don't know why. I haven't done anything to annoy you, have I? It's just your mere existence that annoys me. My existence? Exactly. I have no idea why my daughter fell for you. I absolutely hate the fact that she managed to stumble across you. I mean, over the years, I've had her introduced to so many interesting people. Powerful people. Rich people. Handsome people. People that are equivalent to her value. She didn't take the bait with any of them. I mean, all of them were very interested in her, but she didn't want to go off with them at all. She said that she can't handle their personality. She said she likes the money, but it doesn't make up for their arrogance. Then what happens? She decides that she wants to marry some slob that she saw eating a Big Mac at McDonald's. That's the person that she wants to be with? It is an utter embarrassment. All that I've taught her over the years has accumulated to this. Can you see why I'm very unhappy with my daughter right now? Well, I understand your sentiments, Greg. Being a father is painful when you see your children go down a path you hadn't planned for them. But at the same time, I don't see an issue with this. I mean, at the end of the day, your children's happiness is the main thing, right? If Holly wasn't happy, she wouldn't be marrying me. I mean, face the facts. She's the one who actually proposed to me. She's the one who wanted to go through with this. If that's not evidence that she's making a good decision, I don't know what is. Yeah, right. Don't try to use that as evidence that she's making a good decision. The truth of the matter is that she doesn't know what is good for her. If she had just listened to her father and got with one of those men that I recommended, things would have had a way better outcome for her. Instead, she's going to be stuck with you. A typical pencil pusher. A guy who doesn't even have a hobby. A guy whose most exciting part of his life is just sitting there thinking. I mean, honestly, as someone who's been dating her for this long now, don't try and tell me that she was 100% happy with you all the time. Well, as hard as it might be to believe, that is exactly the case, Greg. She was very happy with me. And I'll be honest, I know exactly how you feel right now. I had no idea why she was interested in me in the first place. You called her an enigma, and it was even more bizarre for me. It took me a while to just get over it and accept what it is. For me to just enjoy the relationship. I realized I shouldn't focus on her beauty and just treat her like a person. 
I think that's what she wanted most. She just wanted to have a conversation like a normal person, not having all these rich men idolize her and look at her like some object. You really have a way with words, don't you? Uh, so tell me, Ben. You been in a normal job that doesn't earn much money. I can't imagine that you have anything to your name. No car, no house, no investments, nothing at all, right? Right now, I don't, to be honest. What exactly do you spend your money on? I don't spend it on anything. I just keep it in a bank account if I ever need it. Well, that's Dell. That is really Dell. You're more boring than watching paint dry. Hey, that is a little bit uncalled for, Greg. There's no need to say something as cruel as that. Okay, then. Well, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to get angry? Are you going to tell me off? Come on, then. Let's see if there's anything else apart from that happy-go-lucky attitude of yours. No, I'm just telling you not to do it again. That is it. You really are boring, aren't you? You don't have any spark at all. I'm telling you right now. I don't think this relationship of yours is going to work out for long. I'm sorry? Why would you say something like that? Because I know deep down within her heart that she desires something higher. I mean, I was the one that raised her. I filled her head with dreams of being successful one day. And if she's not going to get that success, I know she's going to be bored of you. Yeah, well, I'm afraid to disagree with you there, Greg. I don't think she's that type of person at all. I think you try to force your dreams on her, and she realized that she didn't want them. She rejected them. So look, I know you're not happy with her decision, but at the end of the day, she's done something that's going to make her happy. And you told me that you wanted to be a good father. So that means you're going to accept her decision and support her in it. Yeah, right. I'll be supporting her decision for now, but I know you're not going to be sticking around for long. The moment she realizes she's bored of you, she's going to be out the door before you know it. You got that, Ben? Don't be surprised when she suddenly decides to exit. You got no money to your name, right? Not really, to be honest. Okay, well, if that's the case, all I can do for you is just wish you good luck. Go ahead with this marriage. Go do it if you think that's the best thing for you. But I wouldn't get your hopes up about it. Be ready to go down to plan B. She's going to be out before you know it. Hey, babe. How are you doing? I know you're on your break at the moment, but I just absolutely have to tell you this. I know I could have waited until you came home, but this is just too hilarious. You're not going to believe it. Hey, Holly, uh, what's going on? It sounds like you're really excited about something. Whatever you have to tell me must be the real deal. Let's hear it then. Okay, well, get this. You know my brother David, right? Yeah, I know David. The guy who has failed businesses after failed businesses and continuously treats his staff like they're less than human? Hey, come on. Don't describe him that way. He's my brother at the end of the day. But yes, the guy who has his businesses and they don't work out for him. My little bro. Can you imagine that he's actually found a girl for him? Isn't that amazing? It's about time. I mean, all of us are starting to near the age of 30, right? The clock is ticking for him. I kept telling him that he needs to find someone to be with soon, and now he's got someone. No way. Are you serious? A guy like David? Who would date him? I mean, look, I know you're going to get all defensive about it because he's your brother and everything, but he's not exactly the nicest person in the world, is he? I wonder what type of girl would have been desperate enough to actually be with him. She can't be anyone decent. She must come from a country that isn't well off, a place where they really need food or something. That's the only way that you'd put up with a relationship with a guy like David. You have to be so poor that anything is worth it as long as food is on the table. Hey, come on. What's with you and your attitude towards him? What's your reason for hating him this much? Look, it's not that I hate him per se, but just the thought of him and hearing his name kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I mean, I'll be honest. I do my best to be nice to everyone, especially if they're family of my wife. But that guy, David, he always has a bone to pick with me. 
He always thinks that him and I are rivals or something, like we have two competing ideologies. He's always trying to one-up me and brag about how he's living a better life than me. And it kind of gets on my nerves, you know? So don't blame me for being a little bit mean to him. Okay, come on, I get that. But he's my brother at the end of the day. I mean, think about it. He's just a really self-conscious guy. He's trying so hard out there to create a business that actually works for him. He's been doing it for his whole life now. Don't you think that's worthy of respect? I mean, yeah, I definitely do. He's trying to pave his own path, and not many people do that. When I first heard about him the time that I met him, I was really impressed. I wanted to support him in any way that I could. But then I started to learn a bit more about his character. I learned that he didn't really want to create a business environment that worked for everyone. It was all about the money to him. He just wanted to leech the employees for as much as they could. I mean, he even tried to fabricate their salaries, right? That guy's lucky he didn't go to jail or something for that. Look, I know. My brother has his faults. I mean, he could definitely improve in a lot of different areas. I'm not going to deny that. But at the same time, there's still some good within him somewhere, right? And you know what? The fact that he's found someone means that you should be happy for him. I mean, how often does this type of thing happen? It's a marriage! Yeah, alright, fair enough. You have a point there. We should be happy for him. So, anyway, what's the girl like? Who's marrying him? Okay, well look, you're not going to believe this. I mean, I knew it was going to be tough for him to find a partner in the first place. My brother isn't exactly the most highly valued guy. I mean, he doesn't do anything to work on his looks. He has a stressful time trying to start and manage his businesses, and they usually end up failing. He's constantly in a money deficit. To make matters worse, to cope with the stress of his constant failures, he tends to resort to eating really bad food. With that being the case, you can't imagine him being with a great partner, right? Of course not, but I keep telling him that it doesn't have to be this way. I mean, all he has to do is just treat people like normal people. Treat them the way that he wants to be treated, and his businesses would go well for sure. The only reason they fail is that people don't want to work there. He's an absolute tyrant that demands so much of them. He doesn't show one shred of kindness to any of them. And you know what? I'm pretty sure he's going to carry that same attitude into the relationship that he's in. Hold on a sec. What did you just say? Relationship? This is a little bit more than a relationship. This is an actual marriage that we're talking about. Come on, are you serious? I am not going to believe that someone's managed to stay with him long enough that they want to marry him. This is insane. Okay, now I just have to know who she is. Okay, well get this. You're going to be in for a shock with this one. Uh, trust me, I'm already quite shocked about this. But let's hear it then. Well, the girl that he's with is actually quite wealthy. She has a very high salary. Are you kidding me? He got a girl like that? That just doesn't make any sense. Uh, you must be lying right now. Well, that's just the thing. Here's the kicker. She may have a high salary, but that doesn't mean that it's completely a great circumstance for him. Can you guess how old this chick is? No way. Are we really going into that territory? So she's older than him, huh? Uh, that kind of makes sense. Then I guess she's about 10 years older. Uh, she'd be around 40? Nope. You're way off the mark on that one. Are you serious right now? She's older than 40? What type of a woman is he going after? Come on, take another guess. This is fun. I really want you to get it. Okay, well, if that's the case, I don't want to believe it, but maybe 50? A little bit closer. She's actually 55. 55? <laughs> that is insane. There is no way I'm believing that. Is this just some little story you want to tell me to brighten up my day? Holly, I'll admit it. It's quite funny, but you gotta make it a bit more realistic than that. No, I'm being honest with you right now. That's actually the type of girl he's married. Can you believe it? My brother is on a whole different plane from us, isn't he? Yeah, well, you're telling me. I mean, you mentioned that she was wealthy, right? I guess that's one pretty big bonus. But at the same time, to be walking around with someone like that, I kind of feel sorry for him at this point. Yeah, well, he's telling me that it's not as bad as it may seem. 
I mean, it's not like he's going to be married to her forever. He plans on using her for her money. He wants to set up his businesses and then get rid of her. What's the point in doing that? He's just going to set up another failed business and lose her money. I mean, if she's smart enough to become that wealthy, surely she's smart enough to not trust his business decisions. Yeah, well, my brother's not thinking that way. My brother thinks that the only reason his businesses have failed is that he didn't have a high enough initial investment in them. He couldn't provide the best high-quality service that he should be. But now that he actually has money, he's going to be able to do that. Now his businesses are really going to kick off. You know what? I think the way that he's looking at this is way too complicated. I mean, he just has to do the simple thing of treating people like people, right? I don't know why he's got to have this high initial investment. Well, hey, my brother has been doing the same thing with his businesses up until now, right? He's definitely doing something different, so it might actually work out for him. Yeah, who knows? Anyway, I gotta get off my break. I've got half the day off today, so I need to finish as much work as I can before I actually leave. I'm not sure if I can function normally with the image of him walking around with a grandma at the back of my mind, <laughs> but I'll do my best. Oh, wow, really? I didn't know you had half a day off. Are you gonna come home and spend time with me then? No, actually I'm not. I've got some business to do at the bank. I got an email saying that they're gonna call me today. I uh, hope it's not about anything too serious. Oh, wow, I see. Well, sounds like you're pretty busy then. I'll just wait here until you get home. Don't worry, I'll make sure I look pretty for you too. <laughs> Hey, Ben. 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 What do you think you're doing right now? It's the weekend, isn't it? Now, don't tell me that you're at the office being a pencil pusher, are you? Surely you've got to do something on your weekend, right? I don't want to believe that you're this bland guy who just works and works and works and does nothing else apart from that. I'm telling you right now, if you don't change, there are going to be issues in your marriage before long. Oh, hey, Greg, how are you? As you guessed, uh, I'm not actually at work. I'm at home at the moment, taking it easy. You know, really enjoying the weekend for what it is? You don't get a lot of them at the end of the day. Yeah, well, let me take a guess as to what you're doing on this weekend of yours. I wonder if you're putting it to good use. You're not just sitting there doing your little Buddhist meditation practices, are you? Actually, I was, and your message kind of interrupted me. But you know what? You're family at the end of the day, so I don't see why I shouldn't talk to you for a bit. Is something on your mind? How are you spending your weekend? Oh, well, I'm spending my weekend in the exact same way as you are. Oh, really? So you're meditating too? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm doing a little bit of thinking myself, you know, trying to think about why things are the way they are recently. Why is it that my son is married to an old woman? Why is it that none of his businesses can kick off? And most of all, why is my daughter married to a guy like you? Yeah, well, I guess these are some of the mysteries of the world, isn't it? If we didn't think about these types of things, they wouldn't be so interesting, right? Don't try and talk about this like it's a good thing. Anyway, I'm really not happy with you, to be honest, Ben. No, oh, you're not happy with me? I wonder why. Well, you're still doing the same bland thing that you always do. Just meditating, are you? Don't you ever get bored of that type of thing? Why don't you actually do something for once? Why don't you actually spend time with your father-in-law like you're meant to? I mean, I guess if you're free and I'm free, I could probably hang out with you. Well, would you look at that? You actually considered it an option to hang out with me, and you chose not to. That speaks volumes about your character. So, let's just face it. You don't like me, do you? I'm sorry? What are you saying now, Greg? Yeah, that's right. You didn't think I'd call you out on it, did you? But here I am. I know that you don't like me. Because let's face the facts, if you liked me, you would have actually gone out of your way to hang out with me, wouldn't you? You would spend time with your father-in-law, get to know him, and try to build a bond between us. Well, you have a good point there. 
I mean, from my perspective, I thought you and I had a pretty good relationship to begin with, so I didn't think too much about it. That's kind of why I didn't invite you out to begin with. But if you want to see me that eagerly, then sure, why not? I can spare a couple of hours today. You say it as if I'm the one that needs to vie for your attention. You know, don't think just because you have my daughter, that means you don't have to do anything. It should be common courtesy that you spend time with me periodically. I want you to understand that. Okay, well, I'm very sorry for offending you, Greg. We can go out today, then. What do you want to do? Uh, maybe I can take you to one of my favorite restaurants. How much of an eater are you? How much of an eater are you? Do you only eat the stuff that your wife cooks at home? The stuff that the wife cooks is the only thing that's good on this planet. I'm not going to some fancy restaurant of yours. No, you and I are going shopping. There's a big list of items that I need. Oh, really? Okay, well, then let's do a little bit of shopping together. I guess there's a couple of things that I'm looking for as well. Well, that works out, doesn't it? Make sure you bring your card. We're going on a bonanza today. Hey, Dad. Dad? Dad, what are you doing? You and I had an arrangement today, right? You were meant to come over here and see my wife. She's pretty offended. She thought you were looking forward to seeing her. I've got her crying in the other room, saying that no one cares about her. I can't believe you put me on emotional control mode. I really don't have to deal with this. I really just want to focus on my businesses and whatnot, and here I am consoling her. Why can't you just come over like you promised? Come on, David. Be honest with yourself. Do you think I'm going to take your marriage seriously? What do you think you're doing right now being married to a woman like that? What do you mean married to a woman like this? What is so wrong with her? Are you kidding me? Listen to me, David. There's no way I'm going to meet this woman and recognize her as my daughter. I mean, she's almost as old as me. How could you embarrass me this way? Think about my reputation. You know, people still know you as my son. What are they going to do when they see you walking around with a broad like that? Hey, Dad, I was hoping you would have a little bit more understanding of why I'm married in the first place. I mean, think about it. It's not like I have girls lining up outside the door for me, do I? I can only get what I've been given. And how about you think about it a little bit? She's a pretty good catch. I mean, sure, she's old now. Her mentality is going out of the window, but she still works in that company. She still earns like a crap ton of money. And not only that, but if you look past all the wrinkles, there's a little bit of beauty there. You can see a glimmer if you look hard enough. Son, I am sick of you trying to justify yourself right now. This is one of the biggest insults I've had in my whole life. That and your sister. I mean, what is wrong with you two? I didn't raise you two to be this way. I didn't raise you to be a loser with failed businesses marrying an old woman. I didn't raise my daughter to be marrying some 9 to 5 pencil pusher that looks like every other guy sitting on the subway. I expected better of both of you. Where did I go wrong with my parenting? I need you to answer me that. I don't know what to tell you. It's just what it is. I mean, look, at least I'm trying. I'm trying to create something for myself. I've been trying to create businesses that work for years now. I've just been unlucky, you know? I haven't had that initial high investment into them, but now that I've got this woman with me, I can invest as much as I want. These businesses are finally going to start kicking off. You'll see. We're going to do some amazing things with her money. Yeah, well, until I see results, I'm not going to believe anything. You work hard and you show me what you can do. Anyway, I'm glad that you messaged me because there's something really important I need to talk to you about. It's about that guy, Ben. Oh no, not Ben. Do you really have to talk about him? I'm so sick of that happy-go-lucky guy. You know him and I aren't particularly on the best terms. He keeps telling me how to run my businesses. He keeps telling me that I need to calm down and just be a bit nicer to my employees. Like he would know anything about that. 
He's only speaking from an employee's perspective. He doesn't know how to get people going. You really need to give them a kick up the butt. He's only talking about the way that he wants to be treated. That type of thing is not going to fly in the business world. Yeah, okay, well look, I get it. You two have your differences and I'm telling you right now, I don't particularly like him either, especially after a day like today. Did you know him and me went shopping? Well, would you look at that? Isn't that cute? You two get along with each other? Who would have thought? I always knew you had a soft spot for him, Dad. You like going on dates with that dweeb? Now just listen to me, you idiot. This was a tactical move. There's a reason I wanted to go shopping with him. Number one, I have a lot of things that I want around the house. I mean, let's face it, your mother and I aren't particularly earning an income at the moment, are we? We don't really have the luxury to buy fancy, expensive things all the time. That guy and I were out shopping, looking at things that I could potentially buy for the home. You know, things that would contribute to our lifestyle. General appliances and furniture that my wife and I can use. As you can expect, we try to get this boy to buy this stuff for us. Yeah, that's exactly what you should do, Dad. I mean, take a look at the girl he's dating. I don't want to keep harping on about my sister, but do you know how many guys would tell me that they wanted to get with her as I was growing up? I can tell she's a really high-priced item. That guy's got to work to impress us. Exactly. Which is why I thought he was going to buy those things I requested of him today. But get this, he was totally against the idea of it. Was he really now? Yeah, he was really miserly with his money. I said that I needed a washing machine, and then I told him the one that I wanted. At this point, he became really restless and tried to recommend me a different one that was much cheaper and poorer in quality. Well, Dad, I don't really know what you're expecting. I mean, he's not going to be absolutely loaded with money. He's not the type of guy that has the mindset that I have. He doesn't want to keep climbing up the rungs of society. He just wants to stay at the bottom and live comfortably. And because of that, he's not going to have that much income either. It makes sense that he's not going to buy you something expensive. I think your expectations are way out there. Well, actually, that's just the thing. Don't you realize how smart your father is? Of course, I need those items that I requested of him, but I had a different purpose of inviting him out today. Oh, really now? Well, I wonder what that is. Well, get this. I wanted to take a look at the amount of money he had in his bank account. Why would you be interested in something like that? Well, I think there's more to this Ben character than meets the eye. I mean, sure, he seems like a loser that doesn't do anything with his life. But think about it. If that's the case, where is all his money going? I can hardly believe that all of his income goes towards rent and food. There's gotta be something else here. He must be using it for something. He's always had some sort of negative attitude towards investing, particularly in stocks. So what does it mean? It means he must be loaded with savings and what do you know? My fear was correct. What do you mean it was correct? How did you find out? Well, get this. There was an item that I wanted to buy today. It was just something very simple. Just a little bit of food for the home. I said that I didn't have my card or cash on me and that I was going to get him to get it. He seemed reluctant at first, but I said I would send him some money afterwards. Afterwards, I sent him the money and confirmed if he received it. He said yes, and at that point, I said I wanted to see for myself if it was actually in there. And you know what? He has got a lot of money in that bank account of his. A lot more than he needs. There is no way that me buying those appliances that I wanted today would even put a dent in it. What are you talking about? Does he really have that much money? He certainly does. This little act of him being a nobody that doesn't own anything is just that, an act. If you ask me, this is probably one of the most selfish people in our family. Think about what he could be using that money for. Well, how much was in his account? Somewhere around the ballpark of $100,000, maybe even a little bit more than that. 
No way. That is insane. What is he doing? He should be investing that money. He should be giving it to me. Imagine if I had it. Imagine how well my business would cope with it. I mean, does he even care about family at all? How could he have that much money and not help me out? Exactly. That is exactly what I'm thinking. You know what? I think it's a good time you had a talk with your sister. She might be able to sort something out about this situation. Hey sis, how are you? Are you enjoying yourself being married to that dweeb of a husband? You know, one of my friends recently just bought himself a Mercedes. He just broke up with his wife. He's definitely looking for some company. If you want, I could probably introduce you. You are getting up there in years, but you're still a pretty hot item. I'm sure he'd love to have you if you gave him a chance. Alright, just be quiet, David. I don't want to listen to you. I'm not interested in your friends anyway. I know the guy you're talking about. I saw him put his Mercedes up online. He's probably the most pretentious out of all your friends. There's no way I want to hang out with a guy like that. What do you mean? He's not that bad. He'll treat you right. He'll give you an amazing life. He'll be doing all the fun stuff that you've always wanted to do. It's definitely a lot better than that stingy boyfriend that you have. I'm quite happy with my stingy boyfriend, thank you. Let's take a look at why that guy got divorced from his wife. He's already got a history of doing that. He changes the amount of wives he has more frequently than the amount of times he will service that car. I can guarantee you that much. You were always very sharp with that wit of your sister. You know, most guys would be really turned off by that. But thankfully, you got that pencil pusher that's desperate for anything. I'm pretty sure he'll put up with it all day if he needs to. Yeah, well, me being funny is actually what my husband likes about me. So maybe you can just shut up. Okay, well, what is it that you like about your husband? I'm very curious about that. He's just like a normal guy, right? What do you see in him? Well, not that I need to explain it to you, but I trust him. You trust him? Yeah. I mean, let's face it. He's a normal guy, but isn't that a good thing? Just the fact that he's a normal guy, I know that he can't do anything to me. He's not going to hide anything behind my back like some sort of secret lover or anything like that. Oh, really? So because of that reason, you have full trust in him, don't you? Well, what about the finances? Do you trust what he's doing with money? Yeah. Little by little, he tells me that he has a plan for everything he wants to do with the money, but he doesn't want to divulge anything to me. He's very secretive about it. Well, allow me to let you in on a little bit of information. Dad took a little peek at his financial situation. What do you mean he took a peek at it? Well, he checked out how much is in his bank account. Can you guess how much he's got in there? Well, I'm not really sure. Maybe he's got about $20,000. He hasn't really spent much money on anything. He doesn't have many hobbies. I mean, the thing he enjoys most is just hanging out with me. It's quite a good thing, actually. It means that we save a lot. Holly, you're a very beautiful girl, but sometimes you give me such a headache. What are you talking about? You've got no idea how much this guy has. Would you believe me if I said that he apparently has $100,000? Hold on a second. What did you say? Oh yeah, that's right. Now think about that. If he's got $100,000, where is he getting that money from? And even better, what is he going to do with it? Is he just going to keep it in there? Don't you think it would be better if he invested it in my businesses? Well, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Your ideas don't really work out. Okay, but think about it, Holly. The only reason they don't work out is because I don't get enough money for them, right? I mean, here I am struggling and struggling to make something out of barely anything. And here's your husband with a chance to actually let me kickstart things off. I mean, think about it. If he invests, then we make a lot of money. I'd be able to give it back to him with profit. Don't you see that as a really good idea? Yeah, maybe you have a point. You're still not convinced, are you? Let me ask you about the lifestyle you're living right now. Do you really enjoy being so conservative all the time? Do you really just enjoy saving up money and just living off the basic necessities? 
don't you just want a little bit of excitement? Don't you want him to actually do something? That's what dad told you your whole life. I know, I know. I get it. I thought when I first saw him that I didn't want those types of things. I just wanted a guy like him. But lately, I'm getting bored if I'm being honest. I wish he did something. I wish that money was going towards something important. Exactly. So if you ask me, let's give the money to someone who actually knows what they're doing. Let's give it to someone who's actually got experience. And who's better than your little brother? So come on, can I rely on you to convince him? Holly, I want you and your stuff out of this house right now. Do you hear me? I want you out of here by today. You and I are finished. Oh my god, what are you doing? Why are you talking to me this way? You know why I'm talking to you this way. I told you my answer was no, right? I had no intention of funding your brother's business. It is just the stupidest thing in the world. There is nothing good that's going to come of it, and you should know this yourself. Why would you do something so dumb in the first place? Come on, Ben. Stop talking to me like that. What happened to that good, nice guy that you always were? Why are you getting angry with me like this? Stop acting like you don't know. That money disappeared from my account mysteriously, and I want to know why. Why would you do this? So you actually think it's me? Is that actually what you think, Ben? Holly, enough with the games. It was so obvious it was you. Just fess up to it already. I don't have time for this. Okay, fine. I took it. I took the money and I gave it to my brother. But so what? It needed to go towards something, right? I don't know what your obsession is with just piling coin on top of coin and doing nothing with it. It's better if we put that money somewhere and it actually grows into something bigger. Don't you realize that? I don't want to hear this from you. There's a reason why I had that money in there. What reason was it? So it could comfort you or something? Trust me, you should have at least invested in something. Bought some stocks, created a business. If you really cared about this family, that's exactly what you would do. Oh, shut up, Holly. Just shut up right now. I am not having this conversation with you. I'm not putting my money towards your brother's business, and I'm not investing in stocks. That is the last thing I'll ever do. And if you think it's not for the family, then you're sorely mistaken. I had that money saved up there for the family. That's why it was there to begin with. In what way was that for the family? When were you planning to use that thing? It's there for our children. Our children? That's right. Look, I get it. You, your dad, and everyone else looks at me like I'm a really boring guy. There's nothing to me. I don't have any hobbies that I do. All I do is meditate. My money just sits in a bank account and gains a little bit of interest. But that is not all there is to me. I am telling you right now, the one thing I care about is family and creating a good future for my child. Okay, well, do you care to explain to me how this is helping our child? Well, use your brain, Holly. Think about the type of education we could give him or her if we had this money. We'd be able to give them a completely different life from the one that we grew up in. So many opportunities would be available to them. If they wanted to do extracurricular activities, we would have the financial means for them to be able to do that. If they wanted to go overseas and find themselves, then sure, there's money for it. If they wanted to have a school lunch that was actually jam-packed and full of nutrition, then they could have that as well, something that I never had. Oh my god. Ben, I had no idea. You have to listen to me. No, you will listen to me. Every dollar that I put into that bank account was for our children. Every time I went to the bank to put it in there, I had them at the back of my mind. Now, what have you done? You've taken it away to squander it on some business that is doomed to fail. That's not true. I think David can make it out of this one this time. I mean, it's like he said. He's got a massive investment in the business now this time round. It's sure to be successful. Oh, come on. A guy with an attitude like that is not going to be successful for long. He's just repeating the same process, except this time he's just throwing more money into the fire compared to last time. Now, I want that money back. I want that money back or I guarantee you every single member of your family is going to be sued for this. Come on, Ben. Stop acting this way. 
Just have a little bit of optimism. Have some hope. It could turn into something great. Holly, I'm not going to ask you again. Are you serious right now? Are you seriously going to look down on my brother like this? It is your choice. You get me that money back or this is going to get legal. I am not joking when I say this. Come on, Ben. I needed a wake up. I needed a wake up and see what you're doing right now is wrong. Don't you see that you're the one to blame for this? I mean, you've been hiding that money from everyone. Family is meant to trust, right? You clearly show that no one can trust you. You should have seen it as obvious that something like this would happen. And now what are you doing? You're deciding to act like a child and divorce my daughter over this. Have you really thought this through? Do you even know the consequences of your actions? Don't talk to me about the consequences of my actions, Greg. I'm a fully grown adult now. I know what I'm doing. I know what happens from this point on. I know what I'm giving up and I'm being honest. I'm not giving up much. Oh really? You're giving up my daughter and you're gonna say that you're not giving up much? You have got quite the nerve on you, don't you? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but your daughter is showing her true colors. I mean, you really did a good job in brainwashing her. She's back to that money-chasing animal that you always wanted her to be. There's no way that I'm going to be married to a woman like that anymore. There's no way that I'm going to have children with her. I honestly dodged a bullet there. I'm almost glad that your son took my money away from me, which I forgot to say thank you for. It's good to have that safety back in my account. What am I doing right now? Why should I say thank you for stealing from me? That's stupid, isn't it? The only thing that is stupid is this decision that you're making right now. Like, you clearly haven't thought this through, have you? What are you going to do from this point on? Don't you realize that you're giving up a really good girl? Who cares if my daughter has gone back to her money-chasing ways? Don't you see how this benefits you? Now it's going to actually push you to do something with your life. Now you're actually going to use your money to wart something. You clearly don't see the benefit in that, do you? I'm already set in my ways. I already know what's the right thing to do with my life, and going along with that little fantasy of hers isn't going to do it. Okay, fine. So is that how you want it to be? So you're going to break up with her? You're going to get rid of her forever? Well, let me tell you something, buddy. At your age and with your personality, I highly doubt that you're ever going to find a woman that's going to like you. I mean, let's take a look at the facts. There is nothing special about you. You don't do anything to put yourself out there to make yourself look interesting. You came across my daughter by dumb luck and that is it. How do you feel about that? Are you ready to spend the rest of your days alone? I'll take my chances, and in all honesty, if that's the way that it has to be, I'd rather it be that way. I'd rather be alone for the rest of my life than have a child with someone who doesn't even care about it. Someone who is willing to risk its financial security for a little bit more money is not someone I want to be with. So, that's how it's gonna be. Fine. Go on then. Let's see how far you get on your own. If you ask me, you're doing me a favor. Get the hell out of my family. Don't you ever come back to us again. As expected, Holly went back to her old ways and started chasing guys with a lot of money. The same guys that she originally hated. Only this time, she had a different mindset towards them. She was willing to look past their flaws if it meant that they had cash. She was more than willing to pursue them. The unfortunate circumstance for her is that they didn't have the same intentions. I mean, yes, Holly is quite an attractive woman, but she's quite old now. Unfortunately for guys like that, they're a little bit more selective with the people that they choose to have serious relationships with. Time and time again, she saw herself going to one guy and then drifting to another, not being accepted by any of them. Now she's on the clock because she'll be too old to date anyone soon. With that in mind, she realized that I was probably the best option for her, and she tried numerous times to contact me. At every turn, I denied her, and then I eventually had to block her. Her brother had it pretty bad as well. He thought it was fine if I didn't give him the money to support his business. 
At least he had that old lady who was fully loaded with money. Unfortunately for him, he didn't really know his partner that well. It turns out that she was embezzling money from her company. Using her high position, she was able to steal money from it. Unfortunately, the company noticed something very weird in their numbers, and it went under audit. When the audit was over, they found out that she was the culprit. Any money that she had was now gone, and she was spending time in prison. So he's also alone with no one to support him. David is also getting up there in years. He spent most of his adult life chasing dreams that never came true. Unfortunately, he's too old now to see that there's a problem with the way that he does things. If he had just treated his employees properly, even a really crappy business would have done well. It is up to him to figure that out someday. As for me, it's much like Holly's father had said. I mean, yes, it is going to be hard to find another partner from this point on. But in all honesty, I don't think I need one. All of that money that I'm saving up was to benefit the life of a child. Making sure that they had the proper circumstances and that they could be fully prepared for what life had to throw at them. I did a little bit of thinking after putting myself out on the dating market. I wasn't getting anywhere. No one was interested in me. Not that it was surprising or anything. But I came to the conclusion that I didn't need to have a baby with someone to fulfill the dream that I wanted to. So that's when I decided to adopt. I found a little boy who had been abandoned since birth. He's been growing up in that orphanage his whole life. He was five years old and desperate for some sort of parental comfort. He was the first boy that I saw when I walked into the orphanage, and I saw many kids who could really benefit from the gift that I had to give them. Unfortunately, I just don't have the funds to give them a good life. But seeing them in there gave me a new purpose. It made me feel like I should be earning money specifically for this. At the moment, I've secured enough funds for this little boy's future. But over time, I would love to save all of those kids in there. So from this point on, I'm going to continue raising this little boy to the best of my ability and then earning money on the side to save other kids as well. It's going to be difficult, but my determination is solid. Hey, was there some stranger's kid in our yard crying or something? Yeah, there was. I was really, really surprised. I called the police and they came to pick up the poor little guy though. You did what? You should have taken him in and taken care of him. What's the matter with you? What do you mean by that? I mean that a useless woman like you who can't even have a kid should just have adopted that little guy. Maybe it was a present from someone. You never know. What are you even talking about? He looked like he was just four years old and he was crying out for his mom. But still, how could you call the cops on a kid like that? He probably feels like he's been tossed out by you now. Maybe he'll hold a lifelong grudge. Mm, maybe I could have handled it a different way, but I just couldn't think of anything else to do. Well, you should have taken that kid in and not told anyone at all. Are you being serious right now? Don't you know that that would be a crime? His real parents are probably out looking for him right now. But this was your chance to finally learn how to raise a kid. Are you telling me that you want to adopt a kid with me, Trey? You're finally ready to give up on having me seek fertility treatment? Well, I just think that at this point, it's kind of a waste of money, isn't it? Well, the doctor said that we just have to stick to it and stay strong, right? But I just didn't think it would be this expensive. We've sunk so much money into this. I think if we just stick with it and wait a little longer, that you might finally hear some good news from this. Well, I'm tired of waiting for results already. Besides, what's the point of making babies if we have to do it with test tubes and syringes? There is nothing sexy about that. Please don't be like this. How can you say that? Well, why shouldn't I? It's all your fault anyway, so I think that we should just give up on it now. But I'm getting bored and impatient. But I don't want to give up yet. I think we're really close. I wonder if that kid has come back. I seriously doubt that the cops have just let him go. And even if they did, I doubt he'd come back to our place. Even if he did, it's still someone else's kid. It wouldn't be a kid that I would take in and raise. Yeah, you're probably right. I guess you'll just have to have a kid all by yourself. 
What are you talking about? Baby making isn't something that you can do with just one person. Well, I'm sick and tired of waiting, and I think I'm out. You mean you're done even trying to have kids? That's right, I'm done. What's the point of even trying anymore? We should just quit. Is that really how you feel? My break's about to end, so I guess I should just get back to work. Talk to you later. Right. Sure. Well, good luck with work, honey. My name is Miranda, and I'm a 32-year-old housewife. I've been married for six years now, but unfortunately, we have yet to be blessed with a child. There are a lot of children in our neighborhood, and I can hear them running around, laughing, and crying. Living here gives me mixed feelings of anxiety and hopefulness, and I don't know what to do. At first, my husband was really supportive of me and my struggle, but lately he's been putting me down and mocking me for not being able to have any kids. It goes without saying that that hasn't been very good for my mental health at all. Today, a lost child wandered into my yard. He was a little boy who told me that his name was Leo. I played with Leo until the police arrived to pick him up. The whole time I was with Leo, I could only think about how badly I wanted a child of my own. I decided to try and talk to my husband about trying for a kid again, but he put me down and said he was done trying. Hey, are you the one who called the cops and had them come and pick up my child? I'm sorry to ask, but may I please know who I'm speaking to? This is Vicky. I'm Leo's mom. Oh, really? Well, it's nice to meet you. How is Leo? Is he okay? He is not okay at all thanks to you. He has suffered some serious mental shock. Wait, what? What do you mean by that? He told me that something really bad happened to him at your house. The poor kid is just shocked. Wait just a second there. I didn't do anything to him at all. What is all this about? I don't even know who you are and have never even seen Leo before. How did you even get this number? I asked an old lady at the last neighborhood association meeting. She's a big fat woman who appears to know everyone living here. That would probably be Janine Fryer if I had to guess, but I'm not sure she'd appreciate that description. That's right, Janine. That's the fat lady I was talking about. Don't you think that's kind of a rude way to talk about someone? Oh, please, as if I'm going to be lectured by the person who did something to my son. And why did you call the police on him? I told you I didn't do anything to him. He just wandered into my lawn, but nothing else happened between us. He was there. I was the one who left him there. I told him that he had a new mommy waiting inside your house and that he was going to be living with you from now on. I'm sorry, but I seriously have no idea what you're talking about right now. Are you being serious? And yet you just had to go and call the cops who took the little brat all the way back to me. I just told them that he'd wandered off, but still. But why would you leave your own son in my house and run off? I don't get it. I gave him to you. He was a gift? Wait, no, what? I still just don't understand at all. You can't just do that to a little kid like that. Well, I thought that you'd be happy. I mean, everyone around here knows all about how you're barren. Well, I have been undergoing a lot of treatment and trying to get pregnant. But you haven't been able to, have you? That's why you should have been happy to take Leo. But you can't just say that. It isn't as simple as that. Okay, well then what would you propose then? I think you ought to be showing me a little more gratitude for how thoughtful I was being towards you. There's no way you can be serious right now. In fact, I want $100,000 for my kindness. So now you're trying to sell me your own child. Oh, come on, don't use that word. You're just paying me back for a kindness. We're just scratching each other's back here is all. Can't you see that? But don't you see that you're putting a price tag on your own child right now? That's just horrible. It's not a price tag. I'm giving you a present and you're giving me a present and that is that. I really can't see the difference between the two, I'm afraid. Are you stupid or something? 
I know that your uterus is like a shriveled little raisin, and that's why you can't have any kids, correct? I'm sorry, but I'm not going to buy your kid, and talking like that is certainly not going to make me more willing. Fine, then. If you won't pay me, then I guess I'll just have to find another way to get the money out of you, won't I? And just what is that supposed to mean? What are you going to do? Oh, please, as if I'm going to tell you that. But the point is that you have a duty to raise Leo now. He's your son. But why? You're not making any sense. It doesn't need to make sense to you. All you need to know is that he's yours now. And you better get that through your thick skull. But I still have so many questions that I want to ask. Look, you're going to be getting a letter in the mail soon. When you do, call me and I'll bring Leo over, okay? What kind of letter? What are you talking about? You'll know it when you see it. Just be on the lookout for it. Wait, no, I still don't understand. I need more details. Oh my god, you're so annoying. Just shut up and wait for the mail to come, okay? What do you want to talk about? I'm really busy right now. I'm really, really sorry to be bothering you on your break. I just wanted to talk about that kid who showed up in our yard. I actually got a text from the kid's mother. You did? What about? Well, she wanted me to take him and raise him. Wait, what? Are you serious? Well, that's good news, isn't it? Now we don't have to worry about having a kid of our own anymore. But it isn't that simple. You know that it isn't. Yeah, 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 but, but this is great news. And I just got some documents in the mail from that lady, too. Documents? What kind of documents are you talking about? Well, they're the results of a DNA test done on the kid. What are you talking about? Why would she send something like that? At first, I thought that this lady must have been joking about me taking in this Leo kid. But you know what? I think that maybe I can actually do it now. I have no idea what you're talking about. Can you just get to the point? Well, the results of the test said that he was your son. Wait, what? What do you mean by that? I mean that Leo is your love child from an affair you had on me four years ago. Well, did you find out who the kid's mom is? What's her name? Wow, so there have actually been so many women that you can't even guess who the real mother might be? How many women have you cheated on me with? No, oh, come on, that isn't what I meant. Don't twist my words like that. Well, it was a woman named Vicky. Do you know who she is? Vicky? I think she's a woman from Memphis. Well, you did have a business trip up there about four or five years ago, didn't you? I guess you must have not worn a condom while you were cheating. Well, they kept breaking, so I just gave up and thought I was being safe. Well, now you have a four-year-old son. Not only that, but you've made this poor woman raise him all by herself these past years. She told me that she tried to contact you, but you had changed your number. Well, what is the matter with her? Why did she even go through with having the kid? What do you mean, why? Giving up a child is not an easy choice to make. Some women will choose to bring the baby to term even if the father is a cheating dirtbag like you. I can't believe this. Is she crazy or something? She's been looking for you ever since then, all while raising this kid for four years by herself. And now that she's found you, she's making you take responsibility. Oh, this can't be happening. What the heck is this? I guess that she'd saved some of your hair from when the two of you saw each other, thinking that you would pull something like this. That is how she was able to complete the test. She took some of my hair? That is probably the most crazy thing you've told me so far. But you know, five years ago, we didn't know about my fertility troubles. We were only married for a year before you cheated on me and had a kid with some other woman. How could you betray me like this? No, please, Miranda, you've got it all wrong. This is all just a big mistake. I never meant for this to happen. You have to understand me. Oh, please, do you really think that matters now? Leo was born. He exists. You can't just abandon a kid like that. You are a terrible human being, you know that? 
Well, since Vicky has gone to the trouble of coming down here, the least you could do is adopt a kid and raise him, right? Excuse me, are you serious right now? I mean, if you think about it, it's really perfect, right? You were talking about how cute you thought the little guy was, remember? I can't believe you right now. How could you just suggest something to me like that as if it's nothing? But he's my kid after all. Of course I want you to raise him. You'll learn to love him and everything will be fine. You cheated on me. Don't think that I'm just going to forgive you for that, Trey. But this all happened five years ago. Affairs only have a statute of limitations for three years. You can't be mad at me for it now. What the hell? How can you even talk about something like this in that way? I'm seriously hurt by this, you know? You're right. I'm sorry. I never should have cheated on you. Of course you shouldn't have. I want a divorce. Wait, what? You can't be serious about that, right? Oh, I am. You cheated on me and had a child who you don't even seem to really care about at all. But I didn't even know the kid existed until a little while ago. You don't care about anything. Not about my infertility and not about your own son. You're just treating this all as if it's some sort of game, but this is life. Well, then what is going to happen to Leo then, huh? You can't expect me to take care of that kid on my own without you. You know that wouldn't go well for anyone. Well, Vicky told me that she just can't take raising him on her own anymore. In fact, she's been under so much stress that she even checked herself into a mental health hospital. She's worried that she doesn't have it in her to take care of her own son anymore. Your recklessness has caused all kinds of pain for everyone. Well, then I guess that just means that we'll have to stick together and raise him then, right? No, I am going to raise him myself. Wait, what? You can't be serious about that, right? That's right. I'm going to adopt him as my own son and take care of him. Then I'm going to divorce you and make sure that I get custody. Aw, oh, you're just as crazy as she is. You think you'll be able to get custody of my son without me? So then you're telling me that you're going to take care of him. You're going to make sure that he has everything he needs at all times of the day. You'll change his clothes and drive him to school. You'll cook him three meals a day and make sure that he gets driven to all his clubs and play dates and that he goes to bed on time. Do you really think that you can handle all of that? Is that what raising a kid is supposed to be like? That is so much stuff. Of course it's a lot of stuff. You're raising a human child. I could never do something like that. I don't even make enough money to take care of myself. You know that. But I know that you don't either. Well, that is going to change when I take everything you have in the divorce court. Wait, what do you mean? I mean that you're going to pay for your affair and for having a child behind my back. I'm going to make sure of it. You'll have to pay me $30,000, do you hear me? That much money? Have you gone crazy? I really think it would be in your best interest to do what I say. And just why should I, huh? Because Vicky is holding you hostage right now and you don't even realize it. What do you mean by that? I mean that in order to make sure that you didn't get her pregnant and run off all those years ago, she hacked into your phone and laptop and saved some very important data. Wait, what? What are you talking about? What did she do to my stuff? All I know is that she told me that now that she's finally found you, your life is over. Just what were you hiding? I don't know. Just tell me what Vicky told you. I need to know. I think you know. And if you want it back, she wants $100,000 from you. I can't afford that. Oh, really? I think that is a rather cheap price to pay for something that's going to totally end your life. But if I pay her $100,000 and you $30,000, then I'll be bankrupt. Isn't that better than having your life completely fall apart? Oh, this can't be happening to me. I just don't believe it. Well, Vicky's not going to forget you and neither am I. I think you're a pathetic little worm for running out on your own son. I'll make sure that you pay me alimony and child support for Leo as well. 
My life is over either way. Oh, this is horrible. Vicky told me that that was the price she came up with to take back control of her life from what you did to her. But I'll have nothing. I don't even have that much money right now. Oh, don't worry. I'll also be starting my life all over. But you'll be doing it with my money. That isn't fair to me at all. Well, you should have thought about this before you cheated on me. You can't escape it now, so just take responsibility. Oh no, I don't feel good. My head is spinning. I am going to make sure that all the money you ever make goes into paying the both of us back for what you've done to us. And you're going to be supporting Leo until he's 18 without ever knowing him. Please, you can't do this to me. You can count on hearing from my lawyer soon. Anyways, I have to get ready to pick up Leo soon. But that means we'll be living together for a little while longer, right? Of course we won't. You are getting out of the house. But uh, can't we just stay together, please? No, we can't stay together. Okay, I, I get it. That's fine. A few days later, Vicky brought Leo back to my place and I took him in. I could tell that it crushed her to be giving up her own child, but it was clear that her mind was made up and that she'd thought about this a lot. Leo was sad to watch his mom go. Even if he didn't show it on his face, I could tell that he was crushed. He didn't even cry, but it was clear this child was going to need a lot of help. As for the data that Vicky stole from Trey, it was proof that he was embezzling from his company. However, his company found out anyways, and he was promptly arrested. Unfortunately, it meant that Vicky never saw the money she wanted from Trey. Instead, she threatened to take back Leo if I didn't pay. She threw stones at my house and was promptly arrested for it. It is unfortunate that the two of them ended up in jail, but what else could one expect from such irresponsible people? Leo stared at the food I made him strangely at first, and it was then that he told me he'd never eaten anything but Pop-Tarts and cheap candy. I continue to do my best with him every day, expanding his palate and making sure he eats healthy. I take him out to the zoo and various parks, and bit by bit, I can tell that I'm gaining his trust as I learn myself how to become a mother. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this.